right, here we go, guys. I just finished checking all the pivot points for the A-arms on my machine, uh, making sure everything is nice and tight after the trip in Johnson Valley. By the way, welcome back to the videos. After the trip in Johnson Valley, I wanted to make sure everything was good. I did find a tiny bit of play in one of my ball joints. It's the balls. Uh, made by LME TV, but they are rebuildable and adjustable. This is the old one I used to have. Um, this is like their Gen 1. These are the newer style Gen 2s, which they don't call them that, but these are the newer style that have been on my machine for at least, even before the crash, at least a good thousand miles already. This is one of the old ones that I used to have. These are fully adjustable. Um, there's a retaining ring, there's a C-clip, there's a adjustment nut that you know, adjust up and down against the ball joint. And I just finished adjusting the lowers. And the lowers were slightly, they had a little bit of play in them. So um, I adjusted those, added grease, and I checked my play and we're back and being nice and tight. It's funny, oh, that's my that's my door. It's funny though, the slightest adjustment, it was this left uh, front one, the slightest adjustment being off caused um, a audible, audible click when you would move the wheel back and forth. God damn this door. So, now she's nice and tight. I checked the rear, the rear is nice and tight. Um, I checked all my paint markers on the bolts, everything's good. And basically this thing's ready for a little snow ride. We're going to a snow ride. I shouldn't call it a snow ride. We're gonna end up in the dirt and then hopefully as we travel up um, the Baldy Mesa area, the Baldy Mesa OHV area, uh, we should catch some snow because it's been pretty cold. Currently the mountains are covered in snow. Um, and we should find some snow up there, whether it's raining or not, because it's it's really cold. So these last few weeks since uh, coming back from Johnson Valley and the King of the Hammers, um, it's been raining. Uh, it actually snowed at my house, which never happens. Uh, but basically the weather hasn't allowed me to do much. I haven't really been working on customer cars either because of the same thing. I can't really work outside and this thing's in here. And yeah, so also we got a couple parts here. We're gonna install these. I wanna show you guys some of the stuff that I've been doing while the rain has been keeping me keeping me away from other people's cars. Uh, I got a couple of brackets here. This is gonna pretty much finish off my machine as far as parts goes. The car's done. Um, and I plan to do a future video where we go over every single little detail on the machine uh, from the steering wheel to the wheels, suspension, cage, doors, everything. Everything I've got, everything. Uh, but that will be in the future. For now, uh, we're just finishing it off. So these are the last pieces, the last pieces that I need to pretty much complete my machine and hopefully never have to spend money as far as, you know, more parts. You're a liar. You're a liar. The car's done, man. It's got everything I could ever hope for and I'm very happy the way it turned out. We're adding a couple things. Well, some of them I took off, but we repowdered coated a couple parts. Like this was black. This is the EVP. Uh, what do you call this? Um, the tilt brackets, tilt up brackets, tip up brackets for the intercooler. We gotta install those back on because they were black. Uh, we got this here. This is the uh, instrument cluster bezel. And then I got this and I'm not 100% gonna use this. I'm not sure if it's gonna work for my setup because I'm actually running a Switch Pros. So this is the Geyser Switch Pros bezel. They make it in a 12 switch and a eight switch. This is the 12 switch version. But I didn't get it to move my switch pros. I actually got it to uh, reinstall. So I used to have it there. Uh, reinstall my Map Tuner X. So the plan was, well, I can't show you guys how it would be right now because I have to cut the plastic up. But the plan was to put that like that, right? And it's not going to be perfect, but it was going to work. And then put that guy right there. So I thought that was a good idea. Uh, if I center this up here, I mean, it doesn't look too bad. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah, it actually looks really good. Uh, I'm not sure how I would hold it in place. Probably going to use some freaking hot glue. The Map Tuner X doesn't weigh all that much, so a little bit of hot glue might just work. So this is old technology from Evo. Uh, they now use the cold shooter, but this is still great because, well, I can monitor a bunch of stuff. So uh, I can monitor a bunch of data. So AFR, air fuel ratios, PSI. Um, and there's a bunch of other stuff, you know, you could check codes and whatnot. So I'm definitely going to put this back on. I want it. Uh, mainly I always use it for battery voltage before, but now obviously with the big turbo, got to be checking up on other uh, parameters. 
Um, and I also got a couple other products that I need to install here. Uh, two of them being jack um, jack brackets. Is that the right word? I'm not 100%, but I did add a intercom to my machine. As you can see right there, it's a remote intercom. So the traditional one goes in there or, or usually underneath the rugged radio. But this intercom is remote, and the reason I did that is because I didn't have no space. So it's a remote intercom, it's the same exact thing. It's from Rugged Radios. Um, and I decided to do that because I want to be able to talk to the kids sometimes or the wife. Um, and now I made these little brackets for the front. So now that we have the intercom, I could talk to the family. Let me turn on the light here. I could talk to the family, uh, but I needed a place to put the uh, flush mount. So I'm gonna flush mount all the connections, like these guys. Um, a lot of guys run them through the pockets here of your seats, which is also a great option But I wanted to do something where you had just the the bungee cord extensions and this wasn't really gonna fit in there very nicely So I decided something like this and I made this bracket on my own So don't laugh at the terrible cuts that you see there and this guy's gonna go something like that Right? Yeah and that's going to be pretty much the flush mount uh, so I could insert my jack. So, um, yes, I know it's facing kind of a upright angle. And that could be an issue for water, but I got some plugs to plug up the uh, jacks when not in use or when washing it. So those should be fine. So in the back, we're going to do a Stay Flush product. And these are not available yet. Uh, this is just an idea that I threw out there to Chris from Stay Flush. And he freaking made it into existence. These freaking things are in the way. But that's going to go like that, and I'm going to have another flush mount there for the other two plugs for the rear. So, I think it looks pretty cool because it matches the front. Um, so, i got to install that right now. And pretty much that's it, guys. It's all just little trim pieces uh, to complete the car and make it a little bit more usable. So, I did do a couple of things while the car was down. Um, and mainly uh, just checking up on the machine. I was checking the connections at the turbo, make sure everything was good there. Let me get my light. I also check the uh, the health of the clutch So everything looks good on the clutch. No issues with the rollers on the secondary. The primary has been great um, I did add a little bit of weight and we'll see how it does during this um, this ride this uh, coming up this Saturday um, And hopefully it'll be a little bit better as far as the rpm um, I should be around 9,000 rpms if it's too high, I'm going to have to add more weight. I doubt it, though, because I did add about 7 ounces. Uh, so that should be good. Dusted that out. Make sure it's clean. Uh, I made sure everything was good underneath the intercooler. All the uh, connections for the charge tubes. And then the turbo itself, the oil cooler lines, and the cooling lines. Make sure everything was nice and tight. No leaks. Everything seems to be good. But... I have developed a slight rattle. Either I developed the rattle or I'm just noticing a little bit of a rattle more than I used to notice. So uh, in comparison to another machine I had here the other day, which was a, a brand new X3 uh, with like not even 200 miles on it, it was considerably louder. And I know all the Can-Ams have a slight rattle. It usually comes from like the passenger side. And I'm not sure if that's just the gears because the gears are gear on gear that's not really a chain it's just the gears are meshing with each other and they're plastic gears could be an issue with that or it could be an issue with the valve train um i don't think it's anything down low on the block but i do hear a slight rattle so i'm gonna keep an eye on that i'm also gonna change the oil eventually probably after the ride and make sure i don't see no no metal bits or any plastic or anything like that check the oil filter and stuff uh but basically i just make sure things dialed um Big turbos, more power, that can cause problems, and I know that, I'm aware of it, and I'm just keeping keeping, uh, keeping tabs on everything, make sure everything's good. So, we're going to install some of these parts, hopefully uh, everything comes out good, and uh, well, let's get to it. Let's do it. Well, that's the worst thing I've ever done. Works, though. It's not, honestly, not the best, because it's just going into plastic, but... I mean, it's gonna hold, so at least I hope. All right, so how that works is you take off your adapter here, you plug that guy in, and then you have like a bungee style cord that goes into the helmet. I think this is a lot easier than, than having it over here because you have it over here, then it falls off, and then yeah, you're just fighting it. So it feels good, those three screws should hold. I'm happy with it, so and as long as the shifter doesn't hit, 
which it comes close but it's good that's another thing i did recently uh, i had my car for a long time and the shifter was way out of adjustment so i actually had to adjust it back at the trans i put it in neutral on the trans put it on neutral at here and i had to walk it over there on the trans by the cable or on the cable on the adjuster nuts i had to walk it um i think i had to walk it forward so it was a little weird putting into gear the other day and it was just that so it feels a lot better now we'll install that uh center piece right there actually let's install the freaking cluster bezel because that's easy get that out of the way and then we'll install the back piece and then we'll probably finish off with the intercooler brackets so a bunch of little things and this is the problem with trying to have a nice car you know try to make it look nice you want to add nice parts you waste a lot of time wife probably getting mad right now all right so let's install this bezel and hell this is freaking boring i'll just freaking install the parts and show you guys what it looks like on the machine and um yeah we're getting ready for the snow ride so let's finish this goddamn thing up boom that looks freaking awesome i think this is made by mod quad not sure i got this from the boys over at utv stereo shout out to martin for that um that looks great and i got myself a new steering wheel the one that i had was fine but this prp d-shaped i installed a bunch of them on customers cars and i I gotta admit, man, I really like the shape. So um, I got this one, I swapped it out, and that looks freaking amazing. Very happy with that. So uh, let's move on to the next one. Just goes to show you, not everything I do is professional. But this is gonna do the trick, I think. I'll have to uh, screw that in. I think there's two screws here, or rivets, and another one back here I gotta, I gotta make. And I don't know, I think that looks pretty good. It works. Oh, nothing is going right. Here it is. Oh, nothing is working. All right. Hey, chill out over there. It does work. I am going to have to put a couple more screws in it so it's flush. Uh, all right. Let's finish her off. Oh, well, it's finished. I did mess up though. I didn't put the little plaque in there and now you can kind of see the hole. That's only if you really look. Who cares? Anyways, move on to the next. Looks damn good though. All right. Another frustrating hour later, but I got it. So that will be plugs for the kids. To be honest, probably ain't gonna use it very often, but it's there. So it looks good too. Matches the front. All right, intercooler brackets. All right. Well, there's the brackets. Can't really see it. So this guy's in the way that's all right um well i'm done guys we'll be seeing you guys in uh in the next video for the snow ride i'm assuming there's gonna be snow i don't even freaking know i'm just talking out of my ass right now it's honestly super late i wouldn't be surprised if it was one o'clock 12 30 not as late but still pretty late um but we got a lot done looks freaking awesome Everything looks clean, just the way I pictured it, and uh, I'm happy with the install and, and the way everything went. So this car is basically complete. We will be doing a video on every single item that's been installed in this machine that I've installed because I've done all the work. Um, the only other thing that I have coming for this machine is uh, I ordered this this uh, tap clutch faceplate in blue. Not sure why. And then also I'm replacing this big giant tube here. At least I think I am. I don't know. I ordered a five inch uh, 90 degree elbow and it's just gonna be a little shorty. That way it's not so big and ugly and yeah. So hopefully that works out. Other than that, there's nothing, absolutely nothing I'm ever gonna do this, to this machine. Stop lying! Uh, even my wheels. Sand paddle setup on freaking point. The baddest wheels I could get for sand paddles. Just look freaking, oh my God. It looks so sick. Look at the rear ones. Let me see the rear ones. I might have showed these already. But these are the big dog demons. Wow. I'm lucky, man. So, honestly, for you guys in my situation, you guys already know. Thank you for the wife for putting up with me on things like this because I've been in the garage for the last four hours and she had to put the kids to sleep on her own. And I'm not much help, 
but got a badass car in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys in the next video. Stay dirty. Let's go for this ride. Fuck out of me, dude. God damn.